William Nylander and the Toronto Maple Leafs have agreed on an eight-year, $92 million contract extension. This comes to us from Elliot Friedman. I mean, I'm not even going to say anything. Mr. Bowens, take it away. Oh, I could go on for 5, 10, 15 minutes about this because I don't know how to feel. But, you know, my gut has said since all these rumors came out probably a week, two weeks ago there from Chris Johnston, you got to make it happen. You got to make it happen. You can't let this guy walk to free agency. And that's what Brad Tree Living basically has said in all his press conferences, right? It's a lot of money. Is it too much money? I would probably say yes. I think most of the world would say yes. But man, when you have a top 25 player in the league and he's walking to UFA, you can't let that happen. You're not going to trade him at the deadline when you have cup aspirations this year. So what do you do? You got to pay him. Does this suck for next year? Absolutely. The year after that, Tavares is off the books. He's going to have to take a pay cut because he's not an 11 plus million dollar player anymore. And the cap's probably going up again. Right. So it's an interesting, interesting situation. I, even though I'm a Leafs fan, I agree with all of Twitter. This is not the way to construct a team. You can't build a team around four guys. You can't win a cup with four guys. I will say that 100%. But from where I'm sitting, this is one of the best players in the world this year. Yes, it's contract year. I'll add that in too. But I mean, you got to pay a guy. Like you you put the last eight years, I think he's been in the organization. Toronto has been where William Nylander has spent the majority of his life, he said today. Like that's nuts. He, he's been there through everything, the ups and downs, finally winning around last year. He is homegrown talent. You can't let that walk. And I think that's how Tree Living looked at it. I love that take. And I, I, I saw on Twitter today, um, Back when Nylander, I think he was like number 62, there was a picture of him with Kessel, and I think Fanoff was on the ice with him, and they were like, this is how long this guy's been around. I was like, oh, damn. I, when you put it like that, that's pretty crazy. He's been around quite a while, man. Before before Matthews was even drafted, he had NHL games, right? He wore 39 in the show. We wore 62 in the show. He's obviously christened 88 this year pretty well. But, yeah, I mean, he's been around for quite a while, and – a guy that you guys know well, Brooks Like, he uh, he assisted on Nylander's first career goal after assisting on Michael Nylander's last career goal. That's so, insane. Yeah, he, he's been in the league for quite a while now. Like I said, when you have homegrown talent that shows out, you got to pay them because you don't want to lose them. So $92 million right now, uh, basketball and baseball are just laughing at that number. I think they're asking, wait, is that like his signing bonus or something? But speaking of signing bonuses, uh, is it true that it's $69 million guaranteed as a signing bonus? $69 million of it is guaranteed in signing bonuses. There is a lot of bonus incentive built in. I believe $27 million of it is paid in the first two years here. Wow. Um, and it's a full no-move clause through the entire duration of the deal. Um, you can argue over that if you want, like whether that's a good move or a bad move from Tree Living. What's that going to look like in five, six years? I keep coming back to the thing that if a guy wants to be here for another eight years after being here eight years and achieving, frankly, nothing, give him the no move clause. Like, who cares? It's a throw in in the deal. Might save you three, four million dollars. Just throw it in, whatever. Um, and the way that those contracts are built, right, with the signing bonuses, that 27 million up front, it makes it so that it is tradable at the end, right? It's right. basically front loaded. So, you know, th there's a no move clause, but I don't know, man. It, it's a lot of money. Do I want yeah. four guys making what they're making? Absolutely not. But do I want William Nylander on my team every day of the year? I think that's a great point you bring up because in itself, an eight by 11 and a half is almost a no movement clause without one in place. Like that's going to be very hard at any point to trade or to put a deal together with another team that's going to be like going to be willing to take that on. And like you mentioned, front loading, that obviously takes away a lot of the pressure that would be on the team. You know, he would be traded to. On the note of the four making as much money as they are, so it's now four of the top 15 highest paid players in the NHL are on the Toronto Maple Leafs. If you don't know who they are, you live under a rock. That's not my fault. But they're now going to be making $46.5 million against the cap next season. I know you said you're not happy about that. It just seems like someone's going to have to get moved here. Where do you stand uh in regards to that dude like logic 
agrees. I mean, I'm, I'm a logical, reasonable guy at the end of the day, and I'd agree with that. But what have they shown us the last six years? They don't give a shit about logic. They're just going to bring the best players back. Like, we've had this conversation five, six times of they can't bring Marner back. Well, they did. They can't bring Nylander back. Well, they did. They can't sign Matthews to a raise. He's going to go to Arizona. No, he's not. He's signing for 13 plus. He loves playing here. Oh, my God. They can't sign Nylander then. Well, they just did. So, yeah, there's always going to be questions. It's very difficult. If I'm sitting in Brad Tree Living's chair, I'm trading Mitch Marner, but I'm not. So, you know, I think that's the way they're looking at it is we've got four of the best players in the league. John Tavares is still up there, whether you think he's slow as shit or not. He's still a point per game player. He gets it Oops. done night in, night out, right? Like that guy is a top tier player in the NHL still. So, is it way too much money to be giving four guys? Absolutely, but they're just rolling with it. Uh, I feel like to give this some context, I got this tweet thread pulled up from Mike Kelly here. Um, he was comparing the Nylander deal to the Pasternak deal that was signed last year. Um, to put it in context, Nylander is a year older at the time of signing, earns $2 million more in total dollars than Pasternak. If salary cap rises to the current projected increase next season, Nylander will likely make just under 13% of the cap. Pasternak, when he signed, was at 13.6% of the cap. So if you want to do a little comparison there, I think that's probably where Willie was pointing when he was talking about dollars. I think so for sure. And, and I think a lot of, I'll say, Twitter in general today took that the wrong way, like, 11.5 to 11.25 he's not better than pasta what are you doing but it's the percentage of the cap like you just said harry that's what matters that's what teams look at that's what agents look at so it's not apples to oranges it's maybe granny smith to galas or whatever your favorite type of apple is right like it's a it's a bit of a difference because the salary cap has changed the money in the world has changed like that two million dollar difference over the course of that duration of contract that's less than inflation will be in that period of time right so yeah. People getting mad over, he makes more than pasta, just don't understand the inner workings of that stuff, in my opinion. Uh, those are the yes, people that were pasta. Those were the people that were like losing their mind over the fact that Eric Carlson is the fourth highest paid player this calendar year in the NHL, though. Yeah, it, it just, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I've argued with too many people on Twitter today, I think, about <laughs> it, but should he be the highest AAV winger in NHL history? No, but he is because the cap is about to make its biggest jump that it has in the last 15 years. So we're rolling with it, right? So we're in the uh, the business of hot takes. We'll have a little bit of those later, but we got to get a little uh, little steamy here in Leafs Nation. Marner's obviously the big name that I was hearing. If, if they got to trade someone, like no one's going to take Johnny T's contract, blah, 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 blah. So like in what world would it take for you to move Mitch Marner? Dude, like, uh, I'll be completely honest. I probably would have done it a year and a half ago. Like, I've I've been on that. Um, there's a great show on uh, Leafs Nation Network with my buddy Nick Alberga and, and Jay Rosehill, who you guys obviously know who that is. Um, and Rosie always says that Marner plays junior hockey out there. Like, he's, <laughs> holy as, shit. <laughs> uh, as Tyson Nash would say, he's trying to skill it up. And it, man, he, he gets points in the playoffs because he's that good of a player. But he's not a guy that is going to drag his line mates into the battle. He's not going to come out with a 2-1 OT winning goal in game seven of a playoff game because he laid his body on the line and made a huge hit, huge hit in the corner. Like, that's not who he is. I always would have traded Marner. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's so tough. Now they all have no move clauses, right? Like, Marner's right. kicked in this past July. What are you going to do? Uh, um, but, yeah, I mean, I saw an interesting tweet. See if I can find it here from Jordan Schmaltz today. Great Twitter follow if you guys aren't. He is he is all over it. Uh, but he tweeted about Tavares's deal this year. Scrolling, scrolling. His salary next year is 910K. Wow. Signing bonus is $7 million. So... Ooh. If Tavares were to move his no-move clause or waive it, I don't think he would. I think he loves playing in Toronto. He's with family. I think he wants to stay. But if he were to, the team trading for him is only paying nine hundred grand against salary cap for Tavares. So if you're a team that's up against the cap, I don't know, use Boston. Pray to God he doesn't go there, but use Boston as example, right? They're always looking for centers up against the cap. 
Would you not take John Tavares at basically point per game pace at 900 grand? Absolutely you would. So it all comes down to what the players want to do because in Toronto, the players have all the say, but the salary stuff makes it interesting there. 